Hello and welcome to In The Hyperloop, my name is Blake. Today we're gonna to get started with SwissPod and they are uh, putting out a ton of press and Instagram uh, posts and I just wanted to ch highlight this one. Um, another vital thing, um, our Hyperloop vision stands out to disrupt in-route rider experience. A sneak peek of the possibilities will be presented soon at a major engineering institution. And this kind of rides on the coattails of um, what the founder, Dennis, is uh, doing. And he is really thinking out of the box. You can support SwissPod by planting a tree um, uh, for a little bit of money. And that's great uh, as we bring up their page and all the other sh cool swag that they have. Um, and hopefully they have a little model of their pod soon um, as a toy. But um, there, he was also on CNN Switzerland. Um, and let's just give a listen to this 16 minute long interview. Traveling from Zurich to Geneva in 17 minutes on something that looks like this. That is the goal of our guest today. Dennis Tudor, welcome back to Tech Talk. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for the invitation. Now, you were with and us he was previously on no when he was the founder last year. of and we were talking about EPF a similar project, loop. but it was EPFL Loop. Today, you are here with SwissPod. Walk me through this change. So the story started with the EPF Loop. After last year's competition where we were awarded with a third prize for the speed and first prize for the safety, and we're talking about the competition in California, right? Yes. We're talking about SpaceX, SpaceX pod. This is Elon Musk's competition. Yes. Okay. Um, I came back in uh, Switzerland and I decided to allocate more time for the uh, for a company that is aiming to create this mode of transportation in Switzerland, as well for the research because I'm doing a PhD in Hyperloop at uh, Ecole Polytechnique Federale de Lausanne. So now you've actually branched out into your own company right yes. now it's an official thing um talk to me about that i mean how do you plan to make money what is your business model so uh, me and cyril de Nera, that was the, uh, an advisor last year of uh, epf loop mm -hmm. we created together this uh, startup uh, and this is our so cool. vision is to uh, to to be able to build this mode of transportation between uh, Gene geneva and zurich um, we want to, to come up on the market with the cheapest, with the most affordable and sustainable Hyperloop solutions, uh, which means uh, to have um, uh, a way of traveling whose infrastructure is very is cheaper than a maglev or even than a train. So we are talking okay. about 70% uh, cheaper than a maglev infrastructure. Uh, as well, for the pods, we are coming up with an optimization problem that we solve. And we want to uh, to show the, the to people that this mode of transportation can be uh, very very cheap from energy point of view. So we, we want to first of all we want to to show uh, an infrastructure that is the cheapest uh, regarding the mode of transportation, mm -hmm. and second of all about the efficiency of such a, energy efficiency of such a mode of transportation. Okay, give me. Cool. So I would highly recommend you watch the full 16 minute interview um, because it's really, really interesting. So now we're moving to another Swiss team, um, the same team, but they're in Switzerland with EPFL. And I think they had the same hangar last year. Work out of. Call with SpaceX. So that's great. Um, go EPFL loop. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, so we've seen a lot of uh, Hyperloop Pod competition teams arriving in the LA and getting ready for Monday. Um, when I think testing begins. Um, so this is a good uh, DW um, video on what Hyperloop could be like um, in Europe. And let's just give a quick listen. The central train station in Cologne, Germany. The noisy departure point for a quarter of a million travelers every day. 
You know, there's almost nothing better than riding on one of Germany's high-speed rail trains. These things can go up to 300 kilometers per hour. <laughs> He's you know, pretty stoked about that. If the ride were smoother and a whole lot faster. Gliding on magnets, Hyperloop trains could in theory connect all of Europe in just minutes. So this minutes. Uh, reporter goes over That's to the vision of the Hyperloop team at the Delft, Delft University Hyperloop. of Technology in the Netherlands. But could researchers in this old university building really lay the foundation for Europe's transportation network of the future? Rienike van Noort is a civil engineer and she has a very clear vision of what Europe's Hyperloop network could look like. With the Hyperloop, you don't feel any borders in Europe anymore. You can just go to a station, hop into a Hyperloop and be anywhere in Europe. I thought she was the no president time. as well. Right now, Delft you either have Hyperloop. to sit through hour long journeys in the train or you're fast with a plane, but you still have to wait extremely long before you can actually board your plane. And it just makes travel way more uncomfortable than it should be. And then the it team can captain. So is all of this just a pipe dream? Or will this here one day really be able to transport people at speeds of 1200 kilometers per hour? And that way we can create very high speeds. So I'm glad um, DW is dedicating so many different video um, interviews uh, to Hyperloop. Uh, and this is a really good uh, video that you should watch. The rest of it's about four minutes long. Um, and so now going over to Delft Hyperloop, uh, they released this video of them testing their pod um, in the um, test track of Hart's Hyperloop um, at Delft University campus. And this is where Hart Hyperloop revealed their um, pod and they withheld, Delft Hyperloop withheld this video for a bit of time um, because it contains sensitive um, unreleased uh, footage of Hart Hyperloop's uh, test track which you can see up here at the top and um, the switching mechanism. So um, I'm glad that Delft is working really hard uh, and that Hart Hyperloop allowed them to test their pod within the low air environment of the test track. The scissor lift is built into the pavement there. It's pretty cool. pump the air out of the tube and when you're in a low air environment um, electricity can uh, can arc a little bit more and temperature uh, changes can happen a lot um, so it's good to test in a low air environment um, with these hyperloop pods um, for the SpaceX pod competition I just wanted to briefly show uh, all the stories that are happening on Instagram with all the different teams Boy, Instagram is the place to go. Um, SwissPod, and they're really milking the 1970s. Um, this is a uh, robot Hyperloop um, from Morocco, and so they're wanting to join the 2020 uh, SpaceX pod competition, which I, I don't know if it's been released or um, it's out. Um, EPFL is pumping out that they're doing a lot of video stuff and uh, documenting their day at LA for all their donors and supporters. Hyperloop UPV has been really prolific on um, on Twitter and social media and liking t everybody's posts. So thank you, Hyperloop UPV um, from Spain. And the countdown begins um, in 11 days, seven hours, 28 minutes. And they're arriving soon in the US. And then University of Windsor Loop is busy testing. Um, they've been very prolific on social media as well um, and had their pod reveal just recently. Um, they, they're taking photographs of their pod around LA. That's kind of funny. Um, I think it's really clever and smart. Um, just so many of the partners that supported us, um, check out their partners page and they really do have a lot of partners as a lot of these Hyperloop teams. Mr. Beepop, uh, president of Hyperloop TT 
at least that. And that's about it um, from the Hyperpod competition teams. Uh, one kind of um, thing I saw, um, Pub Publishizer, which is a book publishing platform, um, is inquiring for any sci-fi book, um, science, culture, sustainability, uh, book ideas, because they're, they're having kind of a, um, a contest. So check out in the Hyperloop's Twitter account. Um, we pub we uh, will be applying into one of these contests uh, just for fun, uh, envisioning what Hyperloop could be like in the future in a sci-fi book. And then uh, finally, we're just going to end on on this video from SpaceX of the Hyperloop pod competition uh, from last year for inspiration. <laughs> What this competition is about is encouraging people to think about new modes of transport, things that could radically transform cities and the way people get around. And uh, what you're working on is the only thing I'm aware of that can actually be a radical improvement of this current state of the art. And this is all footage from last year. that inspiration um, stay in the loop and stay in touch uh, let us know what you're thinking or any thoughts about the hyperloop pod competition that we're looking forward to being in stay in the loop